Hello, friends. Uh, so the other day, I went to a friend's house for dinner, uh, and it went well at first. Uh, I was a happy guest, and he was a hospitable host. But then uh, we had a little disagreement, uh, not about etymology, believe it or not, uh, but about politics. Uh, so I live here in Washington, D.C., uh, so you know it's kind of a thing here. Anyway, uh, all of a sudden, a after this disagreement, uh, he became a, a hostile host. So it's unfortunate that we had this little beef, uh, but the upside is that it got me thinking about the words hostile, hospitable, and host, and whether or not they're related, and it turns out that <coughs> they are. So if you go way back past French, past Latin, and way back to what's called Proto-Indo-European, uh, which English is descended from, and which was spoken roughly 5,000 years ago in Eastern Europe, then you get the root word hostis, which host, hostel, and guest, uh, and many other words actually are all descended from. Uh, hostis denoted the concept of the guest-host relationship in Proto-Indo-European society. Uh, basically, in that primitive society, and I guess still today, when two strangers meet for the first time, they are potential enemies. But after they become acquainted and are no longer enemies, uh, for example, things like gift-giving, uh, a new relationship begins where the two sides will at times be guests and at other times be hosts. Uh, basically, they both have mutual and reciprocal duties associated with hospitality. So a number of words in modern English related to concepts involving hospitality and also the potential for becoming an enemy are descended from this in the European concept of hostess. Uh, and you can see many of them here uh, in this chart. For example, hotel, hospital, hospitality, and guest all descend from that single Indo-European word. And so those words are all what's called a doublet, uh, meaning they all have the same root, but got to mean what they came to mean today through different paths and with the influence of different languages. And so what's interesting is that many modern languages use the same word for guest and host to represent the reciprocal and contradictory meanings that their common root, the single proto-Indo-European word hostis, likewise sought to convey. Uh, such words are called contronyms. Uh, for example, the, the Italian word ospite, which means both guest and host. Also, the Spanish huesped, which, uh, when referring to people in the social settings, means guest, but when referring to biology, for example, some kind of parasite, means host. And the French word ort, which more frequently means host, but traditionally could also mean guest. Uh, you'd think, for example, Italians would be confused when they are told about a dinner party that they will be an ospite at. But apparently, and fortunately for everyone on the guest list, or, or is it the host list, hmm. it's always pretty clear from the context what their exact role in these dinner parties will be. Also, I should mention, in Italy today, more and more people will use alternative words for host, such as ospitante or padrone di casa, to avoid the potential confusion associated with using the word ospite. So, uh, there you have it, uh, a host of information about the origin story and etymological relationship between host, hostel, and guest. Uh, and as for my friend, uh, the hostel host, who in the days following our disagreement became, quite frankly, a little bit of a hater. Oh well, you know, what can you do? Uh, but anyway, fortunately, time heals everything, and with time, uh, we went back to being great friends. Uh, and since then, we've actively fulfilled our reciprocal duties of guests and hosts many times, uh, just like in the good old days of our proto-Indo-European ancestors. Uh, so there are no more hostilities, and all is well. Thanks for watching.